In this video, we're going to go over some practice problems associated with Young's double slit experiment. So we have a first order bright fringe, and it's observed to be at an angle of 1.5 degrees when a light with a wavelength of 600 nanometers passes through the two narrow slits. How far apart are the two slits? Well, first, let's get a good understanding of this experiment. So here we have two narrow slits, and so they're separated by a distance d, which is what we're looking for in this problem. And this is going to be the screen. And in part b, the screen is 4.5 meters apart, so that's l. Now, if we have some plane waves passing through these two slits, they're going to form, they're going to diffract around the two narrow slits. And so these two waves are going to interfere with each other, and they're going to uh, create a pattern on the screen. And so the pattern is as follows. At the center, it's going to be very bright, so you can have a very large amplitude. And then as you move away from the center, the amplitude decreases. So you can get something that looks like that. So at this point, we have a maximum value. That's where constructive interference occurs. And here we have a minimum value. That's where destructive interference occurs. Now, constructive interference occurs when two waves are in phase. And so they add up to form a larger wave. So that's constructive interference. Destructive interference occurs when two waves are out of phase. And so they cancel out. Now, two waves are out of phase if their wavelengths differ by a half, meaning not their wavelengths, but their relative positions to each other. If their relative positions differ by half a wavelength, then they will be out of phase and they will interfere destructively. However, if you have two waves that are separated by a distance of one wavelength, then they will be in phase with each other. Now there's two equations that you need to know, and we're going to derive them. So let's start with this point. And we're going to focus on this point here. So this is one wavelength, two, 3. And I didn't quite make it at 3, so let's do that again. Let's say this is 1, 2, and then 3. And then here, let's say this is 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Now, to get to this first fringe where m is 1, this wave requires one extra wavelength. And so if we turn this into a right triangle, where this is the hypotenuse, this will be the extra wavelength, and this distance will be d. So I'm going to redraw that right triangle. So it looks something like this. Here's the hypotenuse, this is d, and this is lambda, the extra wavelength that was needed for this wave to reach that point. And this is the angle theta, which this will be theta 1. These two angles are equivalent. This would be theta 2. But we'll talk more about that later. Sine theta is equal to the opposite side. This is opposite to theta. Divided by the hypotenuse, which is across the box, or the right angle. So we have sine theta equals lambda over d. So if we multiply both sides by d, we get this equation, d sine theta is equal to lambda. Now, we need to add m in front of this equation, because it all depends on which fringe we're looking at. So for the first order fringe, m is 1. For second order, m is 2. Here for the one at the center, m is 0. For this one, m is negative 1, and m is negative 2. Because at this point, these two waves, this one 
and that one, they will differ by two wavelengths, where m is 2. Here, they will differ by one wavelength. So you need to add m in this equation to make it work. So make sure you remember this equation. d sine theta is equal to m times lambda. So anytime you're given the angle in degrees, you may need to use that formula. Now there's another equation that we need to talk about. So going from here to here, this is going to be theta 1, because it's associated with the first bright fringe. And this is L. So we can draw a triangle. Let's say this is theta 1. This is L. And let's call this the distance between the first bright fringe and the center, y1. And the distance between the second bright fringe and the center, y2. So this is y1 in this example. Tangent theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So it's y1 over L. So that's another formula to know. Now, whenever you have an angle in radians, not in degrees, sine theta is approximately equal to theta if theta is very small. And the same is true for tangent theta. It's approximately equal to theta when theta is small. So therefore, we could say that this formula simplifies to theta is equal to y divided by L. And this formula simplifies to this. d theta is equal to m lambda. And we said that theta is y over L. So then replacing theta with y over L, we get this. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by L. So this is the form that you want to remember. So Y, which I'm going to write Y sub M because it's dependent on this number, times D, the separation distance between the two slits, is equal to L M lambda. So this is the second formula that you want to write down. Make sure you know these two because these are the two equations we're going to be using. Now let's go ahead and finish this problem. So part A, how far apart are the two slits? Let's make a list of what we know. So we know that theta is 1.5 degrees. And we also know that lambda is 600 nanometers. That's the wavelength. Our goal is to calculate the distance between the two slits. And we have a first order bright fringe, which means that this is first order, m is 1. So for this first part, we don't need this equation. We only need this one. So let's go ahead and use it. So we need to calculate d. Theta is 1.5 degrees. m is 1. And lambda is 600 nanometers, or 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 600 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by sine of 1.5. That's equal to 2.29 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. And if you divide it by 10 to the minus 3, this is going to be 0 0.0229 millimeters. So I'm just going to write that here. Now let's move on to part B. What is the distance between the first bright fringe on the screen and the center if the screen is 4.5 meters away from the slit? So this is the screen. So here is the first bright fringe. That's where m is equal to 1. So we need to calculate this distance between the first bright fringe and the center. So basically y1. So let's use this formula. So in this case, m is 1. d is basically this value. l is 4.5 meters. And lambda is still the same. It's 600 nanometers. So we just need to use that formula. 
So it's y1 times d, which is 0 0.0229 times 10 to the minus 3. That's equal to L times M times lambda, which is 600 times 10 to the minus 9. So let's multiply 600 times 10 to the minus 9 by 4.5, and then divide that result by 0 0.0229 times 10 to the minus 3. And so y1 is 0.118 meters, or you could say 11.8 centimeters. So that's how far the first bright fringe is from the center. Go ahead and try this problem. Light with a wavelength of 650 nanometers passes through two narrow slits that are 0 0.05 millimeters apart. If the screen is 8.5 meters away from the slits, what is the distance between a third order bright fringe and a central fringe? So let's start with a picture. So let's say that this is the screen and it's 8.5 meters away from the slits. And so this is going to be the central bright fringe. There's the first fringe, second, and then the third. So here m is equal to 3. And so we want to find out how far the third fringe is from the central fringe. And we're given d, the distance between the two slits. So d is 0 0.05 millimeters. And then lambda is 650 nanometers. L is 8.5 meters. And we're dealing with the third order bright fringe, so m is 3. So let's use this formula again. ym times d is equal to lm times lambda. So we're looking for y3. d is 0 0.05 millimeters, or 0 0.05 times 10 to the minus 3. L is 8.5, and then times m, which is 3, times lambda, which is 650, times 10 to the negative 9. So what you need to do is take 8.5, multiply it by 3, and multiply that by 650 times 10 to the minus 9. And then take that result divided by 0 0.05 times 10 to the negative 3. And so y3 is going to be 0 0.3315 meters away from the central fringe. So that's the answer. Or if you want it in centimeters, you could say it's 33.15 centimeters. Just multiply this by 100. And so that's it for this problem. Number three, light with a wavelength of 550 nanometers in air passes through two narrow slits in water. And we're given the index of refraction of water. The screen is 3.6 meters away from the slits. If the fourth order bright fringe is 4.5 millimeters away from the central fringe, what is the separation distance of the two slits? Go ahead and pause the video. Feel free to try this problem if you want to. So we're given the wavelength in air, that's 550 nanometers. We have the index of refraction. We have the length, which is 3.6 meters away from the two slits. And we also have M. We're dealing with a fourth order bright fringe, so M is 4. And the distance between the fourth fringe and the central fringe is 4.5 millimeters. So that's ym, which is y4. So we need to calculate d. So we need to use this formula. y sub m times d is equal to l m times lambda. So how do we incorporate n in this problem? You need to know that as light moves from a material with a low index of refraction to a material with a higher index of refraction, the wavelength of the light decreases. So we need to calculate the new wavelength of light using this formula. So it's going to be 550 nanometers divided by 1.33.
And so the wavelength of light in water is 413.5 nanometers. So now we can finish the problem. So YM or Y sub 4 is 4.5 millimeters or 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Our goal is to calculate D, the separation distance of the two slits, L, the distance between the screen and the two slits, that's 3.6 meters, M is 4, and lambda is this value, 413.5 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 3.6 times 4 times 413.5 times 10 to the minus 9, all of that is equal to 5.954 times 10 to minus 6. And so we need to take that answer and divide it by 4.5 times 10 to minus 3. And so the separation distance between the two slits is 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And 10 to the minus 3 is basically a millimeter. So this is 1.32 millimeters. And so that's the separation distance of the two slits. So, remember, for these types of problems, there's only two formulas you need. This one, ym times d is equal to lm times lambda. And keep in mind, you can only use this if theta is very small, which, for these problems, it usually is. And then the second one, d sine theta is equal to m lambda. And you can always use this. Just make sure that uh, theta is in degrees. You could use radians too, but if it's in degrees, this should be fine. If you don't need the angle, chances are you're probably going to use that formula.